Yo, 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 welcome to another episode of Sweezy Films TV. We got a very, very special guest in the building. Let you introduce yourself, big dog. Yo, you know what's going on. It's A.U. Holmes, CEO of Community Consciousness. And like I said, we're going to learn something to earn something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to start off by um, where you grew up at, big dog? Well, originally, I grew up on 105 in St. Clair. But from there, I bounced around a lot, like up St. Clair and you know, East Cleveland, just in and out. Stayed in the same environment. We're just up and down the Claire, for real, for real. Okay, so how was it growing up over there? Well, I couldn't see this as a kid, but I could tell now that my environment was very impoverished. Like, I was eating Cheetos for a snack time. There's no real grocery stores over there. There's nothing really healthy in the environment. We got liquor stores everywhere and a chicken joint and gas station food. And, I, even now, I can tell the kids now think that I guess that's what we eat, because that's what we eat. But, <laughs> so what do you think has changed from then and now? Um, I think now there's a lot of people like me that came from that area that we, we see what needs to be changed because we went through it, and we're willing to put the work in in those communities. But it's a different age with kids and the technology. Right. So you know now on TikTok, they doing any and everything. Like, it, you catch kids at the gas station hustling for money now. Like, I ain't see that when I was young. Right, but right, you right. also see kids on the corner hustling that water, too. Right. So. It most definitely will change. Most definitely. Um, so we're going to switch it up and um, talk about music. So uh, what led you to music? Um, man, uh, staying with my moms, we get into it a lot. And I, I had a boom box. Somebody gave me a boom box for Christmas. I don't remember who, but I had two CDs. It was a Jeezy CD and the, the Flight School CD by Wiz Khalifa. I stole that from somebody's car. <laughs> I knew I, because I didn't know who them people was, but I'm like, I need some music to listen right, to. Right, right, right. So, and I would just listen to them all the time. And from there, like, I always had a way with words. So it was an outlet for me to be able to express myself at an early age. And that's what really got me into it and wanted me to keep going. So where did you start first? I know you um, the artist and you produce. So where did you start first? Well, I actually started everything at the same time. So when I was in high school, I met somebody, uh, my homie Tease. He uh, was the first person to take me to the studio. Shout out Tease. You know, and in the studio where I was at, I learned how to use Free Loops. I learned how to use Pro Tools. I tried to use reasons before, okay. recording myself, trying to make my own beats. So I started everything really at the same time. Okay. But I flourished more with the artistry. So I basically was rapping more than I was producing. It wasn't really till later on I got tired of paying people for beats right, that right, I started right. producing. Okay. So explain your creative process. What's that like? Um, well, see, it's different now. I used to smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I used to smoke a lot, and um, I would just let my mind take fake place and form shape and just be able to have raw, creative, inner child thoughts and right. be able to bring them to life. Right, right, right. As far as, like, on my artistry, as far as making music, rapping, I like to play with words. So I would, like, you know, see how words bounce off each other right. or different flows and patterns match and just see how that works. But with the producing thing, it's like I get inspiration from anywhere. Right, right. Like I can hear birds chirping outside and be like, what's that? Oh, I need that. I got to go find that on the internet. I got to use that somewhere. Right. So it's more like putting, putting a puzzle together and making my own, uh, like a big, you know those big puzzles your grandma used to put together, put all the pieces? It's like creating your own one and putting your own pieces in there. You can do whatever you want to do when it comes to music, really. Speaking of also music and creative, um, name some of the influencers that you have. Um, as far as music, uh, J. Cole, for sure. Um, Kid Cudi, I like Fat Man Key from the A. Um, definitely Erica Badu, Three Stacks. Okay. Um, music business, though, that's a different story. I, you know, it's Drake and, and Jay Z. Cause I really like the way they handle business. They, they stay in the contract, they stay with some money, and they do consistent business. Even if you ain't seeing them, you seeing them. Right, 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 that's true, man. So um, also, um, as far as influencers, I know you be in the community a lot. Right. You do a lot of community work. Can you 
um, yeah. talk about some of the things you be doing in the um, city? So um, I started a project um, in February uh, 2021. It's called Food for Thought. Okay. Now, it started from I just wanted to be able to give people knowledge on how to eat better and like take care of themselves. Because right. we don't have that knowledge. It's not given to us. They don't teach it in school. And it's always somebody trying to teach a course on it and get some money from it. Right. So I was talking to one of my mentors, and they said, well, why would they want it? How do they know they want it? You got to give them something to want. So I started Food for Thought, where I do the food drive, and I give away organic produce, like vegetables. We give away pineapples, watermelons, um, ginger, red kale, potatoes. And I got the food bank involved, and I do it right in my community, like literally across the street from the worst grocery store ever. <laughs> that's, the, that's smart, man. They so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna even say their name, Go but <laughs> like if you know <laughs> what we do. <laughs> hey, that's what's up, man. So um, speaking of that, um, too, um, as far as health-wise, we said something about yeah, um, our health issues going on too. Uh, yeah, actually, within that year, um, on March uh, 19th. I suffered from a sudden cardiac arrest. Okay. Now, it had been easy for the hospital to push me off and say I was on drugs or I was doing something or people would say I was stressed. But really in that time, I was eating the best I've ever ate in my life. I was less stressed and just more confident in what I was doing. Right. And I had really sat down like a weekend beforehand and said I accept my life, you know? Right. Like, I, I appreciate it. I showed real gratitude, probably for the first time, and it was taken away from me. I, I had a sudden cardiac arrest, and I was pronounced dead for uh, like 15, 20 minutes. So definitely showing gratitude now, because at that point, you really, I shouldn't even be able to talk to you. Right. So, but that happened, and I was in a coma. Um, they told my, my family that I wouldn't wake up if I woke up for six months. Wow. But I, I woke up in seven days, man, wow. seven days. And it's crazy, the first thing they said that was on my mind is, I got to do this food drive. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how focusing I was. Dedication, man. Dedication, man. That's why they need more people like you in the neighborhood. So. Yeah, but they, uh, I got a, um, they gave me a, a pacemaker and a defibrillator because they did five studies on my heart. When I initially was in the coma, I had an ejection fraction of 8%, which is like your heart's not working. And then the next day, I went up to 65, which is like better than average. <laughs> around average so um technically i'm a complete enigma like they even had the case western students come and do studies on me and like figure out what happened but i still haven't even gotten the answers from that but i'm just grateful to be moving and able to move around like everybody don't get that chance and i was given that so i try to use it in the best way i can that's dope. did you like change anything after that like maybe like a diet because you said you was already on the right path so uh, did you change anything after that? Yeah, in a bad way though, cause like I accepted it, you know everything, and I tried to work. It wasn't until my defibrillator it shocked me inappropriately, right. and that changed me. I, I developed PTSD. I was kind of scared to even move. Right, 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 like right. I wouldn't drive my car. I, so I was eating junk food, ordering off of DoorDash. I, I wouldn't go nowhere. I was scared for. Right. And that kind of, I had, it took a lot to, like, get out of that. Like, I, man, I was scared to go up and down stairs. Anything that caused my heart to move and I could feel it through my chest, I ain't want to do it. So, yeah, that was a lot to uh, go through for real. I bet, man. That could be a lot to go through, man. Life-changing, man. So, um, so what led you to become an activist in the street? In the city? Um, so, I see the problem. And I see a lot of people talking about the problem, a lot of people complaining about the problem, but not one person putting a solution forward. So I can't, I know I can't save everybody, but it's like Tupac said, I might spark the brain of someone that does change. And you never know who you're touching. So if I can put a message out and say, this is a better way of living, and I tell five people, two of those five people actually hear me, they go tell 10. Five of those 10 people that they told actually hear them, they go tell 50. So it's a domino effect. It's just, if you keep on spreading, the message is going to grow. It's just going to grow, and it, it's going to happen organically. Like I said, I, I just told someone, I can't tell people how to drink water. I can't put your face in the lake and say, drink this water. 
I can point to it and say, look, it's over there. It's that way. If you want to drink the water, it's over there. You look thirsty. <laughs> Um, the latest projects that I've worked on as far as, uh, well, I could do music. I, um, last uh, fall, I put out a project called What Means the World to You. Um, I created this project while I was dealing with like being scared to do anything. And I was in and out of the hospital, and I was producing it on my laptop in the hospital bed. And the nurses came, kept coming in and saying, wow, you're, you're working while you're in the hospital. That's so, like, you're focused. I said, well, this is just something that I love to do. And, like, music mean the world to me. So throughout the album, I expressed, like, things that was really close to me and dear to me. It's really messages in there telling people that I love them because you never know when someone's time is gone. You know, like I said, I, got, I was real fortunate to be able to breathe and talk again. So... Um, I did, I shot uh, music videos for it, did a lot of promotion behind it, and it's just a time piece. It's something to remind me, because the, the first song on the album is called Died Twice. I recorded that song the day before I had the cardiac arrest. So like a lot of people probably think, oh, you made that song because you had the situation. I recorded that song like literally 10 hours before I had that issue. <laughs> so like in this, in the song, I, I say I feel my soul getting close to the ether. And I kind of, I feel like I spoke it into existence a little bit, but I was just really expressing myself. But that, that's a project that really means the world to me. And right now, I'm cultivating uh, another project for the city, collaborating with other activists in the city. I want to take Food for Thought to the next level. Since I've been doing it for the last two years, I want to make it big. Now, I can't tell you how big, you just got to come and see it, but I want to make it bigger than what it was. We're not just passing out food and information. You just got to come check it out, and we'll be still in the East Cleveland area, St. Clair side by 105, right where I grew up, doing it again. Okay, um, can you let the people know how to get in contact with if they want to be involved or reach out? Um, uh, yes, you can contact me uh, via Instagram, AU underscore H-A-H-M-S. You can contact me through um, GotNack, that's G-O-T underscore K-N-A-C-K. Um, you can also reach out to me via email, that's J-A-M-E-S-G-A-I-M-A-N, the number zero at gmail.com. And you can really reach out to me any one of those ways. I'm a quick responder. I love doing work in the city. Um, it's, just, it's just something I love for real, for real. So what's next for AU? Um, more so I've been gearing on uh, talking, talking to people, um, enriching the minds of others around me. Uh, I want to say back in 2019, I started sending these text messages out to my peers. And just it was basically conversations that I was having with myself. And I said, well, somebody else need to hear this. So I sent it out. And I've been doing that through the pandemic and People was telling me how much they needed it. And even before I had the incident, and after the incident, um, I think it was in September of 2021, uh, somebody told me, man, look, the world needs to hear these messages. So I started just making videos on my Instagram, uh, making reels, making TikToks, and just posting them. And I started getting renowned by people everywhere. People was loving the message that I had. So I started to make myself available. You can book me to come speak. I can speak at your events. I can speak to your employees. I can speak at your schools. Like I'm, I'm real enriched in helping people develop the right mindset to going where they want to go. Because I feel like anything in this life that you want to do, you can do it. And I'm not going to tell people that it's, it's easy. But this shit not hard. You just got to want to do it. You know what's hard for me is to sit around all day watching Netflix. It's hard for me to scroll on TikTok. It's hard, for me, it's hard for me to eat bullshit food when I know it's bullshit. That's hard. It ain't easy to find good food. It's not easy to find what the good books is. It's not easy to find stuff that's educational. But it's what you do with the time that you're given that makes things possible. So I just want to be able to be a voice for people that want to do better. 
like I said, I'm not going to put your face in the water, but if you want to go drink out the lake, it's over there. Right. I, will, I will give you the direction and the guidance to go wherever you need to go. I just feel like people need to have an understanding on how to uplift themselves and be able to be their own voice of knowing their character and what they really want to do with their life. It's just you got to have self-love. That's, that's the key point. You got to love yourself. When you love yourself, you're going to do whatever you need to do. <laughs> so, um, I got another question for you. Um, your top three books you read? Top three books that I've read? Um, a lot of people are not going to like this because it's cliche. Uh, I like Mastery by Robert Greene because Robert, everybody, Robert Greene were now everywhere, even in the hood. Uh, I like, um, and you know, I haven't read this book. It's been recommended to me for the, like the last 10 years, but I've been tapping in onto his YouTube page. It's uh, the Rich Dad channel by Robert Kiyosaki. And I've been like just tapping in and listening to his, his topics and his guidelines. But I recommend people to read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. When I get around to it, I'm going to get to it. And I just finished reading a, a book by Napoleon Hill. It's not his famous book that everybody knows, is Think and Grow Rich, but I just read Success Habits, and like that was one of my favorite reads from this year. That was three. Oh, that's two? That was three. Oh, well, I, I didn't name a third book. I named the, uh, Kiyosaki, uh, the Robert Kiyosaki pant page. Um, I'm going to say uh, Talking to Strangers. Uh, Talking to Strangers by uh, Malcolm Gladwell. That was that's definitely one of my top reads. I think I read that either last year or two years ago. Now, um, let's switch the topic back to the music scene real quick. Um, how do you feel the internet has impacted the music scene right now? Um, so I feel like the internet is showing people highlights. Right. Nobody's seeing the rough side of nothing no more. So it's looking like people is making overnight success. So now people are working less hard because they feel like they can get an overnight success. What they don't see is the people that looks like they're having overnight success working hard. They be putting in work, they doing shows, random by there, they talking to people. They getting blew up from some, doing something. It ain't just five people watching them on the internet and everybody streaming it. So it's just, it, I think the work ethic is when an increased downhill and more people trying to get involved. So I wouldn't say it's oversaturated because it's 8 billion people on the planet. <laughs> I don't listen to 8 billion artists. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but uh, I just think the internet is making people, they, they stuck in an illusion. Right. So they feel like they don't have to work hard. Right. But you really got to put the work in no matter what you do. Right. You got to. That's facts, man. Well, you most definitely put the work in through the city, man. We appreciate you for coming out. Hey, you. So um, we'd like to tell the people your contact information. Well, you told them your contact, your IG, everything. Yeah, yeah. We went over that. Um, well, tell them again for the, <laughs> tell them again you, for the handicraft. All right. So look, <laughs> you can contact me on Instagram at au underscore H-A-H-M-S, or you can contact Community Consciousness LLC on Instagram. Reach me via email at J-A-M-E-S-G-A-I-M-A-N, the number zero, at gmail.com. And that's how you can get in with me. We can work in the city. We can build together. We can learn. We can grow. You know what's going on with me. I'm going to win a day, learn something to earn something. And you should do both. Peace. Yes, sir. Mr. Rap. This is Film TV.